Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, which is going to be a little bit long, we're going to work on pretty much all of the topics for our first week of Web Dev 2. And the focus of our topic is HTML and CSS review. And you can see on my Trello board here for our first topic, HTML and CSS review, um, basically, you know, the head section, the meta tags and things like that, linking an external style sheet, HTML syntax, CSS syntax, commenting, using Visual Studio Code, at least at a basic level, uh, managing files and folders, and publishing to the web. And I want to kind of hit all of these, some a little bit lightly, some a little bit more heavily. but. Um, yeah, I want to take care of all of that. So be prepared and um, have your uh, code editor open. Plan on making a web page with me. Now, starting in the winter term, we are switching over to Canvas, which is very likely new for you. It's definitely new for me. I've been spending some time with it over the past few weeks, and I'm feeling a little bit better about it. So basically, in our first module, you, you probably don't see most of this stuff, but you will be able to see our week one module. And there's some things that we're going to be working on. There's going to be a page of resources, which I'm not going to open right now because I'm still refining that. Um, I'm recording this video on December 8th, which is still like three weeks before the term starts. So a lot of this stuff is still got the, uh, the duct tape on it, and so to speak. So um, there's going to be uh, some resources. There's going to be articles and videos that I want you to watch, not just this video, which should be part of that list, but there's going to be other great resources in order to kind of remind you about some of those concepts of HTML and CSS that you've learned in prior terms. Um, however, there's a couple of attendance activities to take care of. Checking your server space. Yeah, we're going to kind of take care of that um, as part of this particular demonstration. Connect via Teams. I'll let you work on that one yourself. That should be pretty easy, but there's a little activity regarding uh, connecting with me via Teams. Um, now, our official graded work, participation, resources, and experiments, you're going you're gonna to do a little bit of research on that one, so you'll be taking care of that one on your own. There's a little practice quiz. I put this practice quiz, and you can see it's only going to be two points because I wanted you to have a Canvas-based quiz experience before you took your official quiz this week. So a little eight-question practice quiz of so few points, and it's not a big deal. I just wanted you to try a Canvas quiz. <clears throat> That's practice. Then there's going to be a real quiz you got to take. It's a 30-point quiz. I can't remember. It might be just 20 or so questions, 20, 25 questions tops. And for the most part, it should be on things you've learned in um, in the past few months in a CIS 195 class. And then we're going to have our first assignment, which will be due Monday, um, obviously Monday after the term starts. So, And we're going to be hitting a lot of that in this demonstration video. So yeah, so there'll be a couple of activities we'll kind of take care of here. So that's in Canvas. And let's see, I'm going to jump over to, where do I want to go? Let's see, let me minimize this. Now I've got my page open and I've got my, I, I created my page before turning on the recorder. So this is my, uh, my home page here and I'm pretty happy with it. And this is going to be the kind of like the first draft of my CIS 295 web development home page or portfolio page. And you're going to be having one too. Yours is going to look different than mine. However, we're going to start off so simple in structure, there probably are going to be a number of similarities. And I'm going to use my page as an example of some HTML and CSS review. Now, a couple things we do want to do on our page. We want to go with a mobile first philosophy. We are going to be designing this page so that it is mobile friendly. And I'm not even worried about how it looks in a desktop. So I've got my browser already using the mobile emulator. Don't forget in your browser, control shift I, turn on your mobile emulator. Now my mobile emulator is off, I'll turn it back on. And I'm going with an iPhone 6, 7, 8, something that gives me about 375 pixels of visible viewport width. So I'm gonna keep it like that. We are limiting the scope, we're limiting how much real estate we have to work with. Mobile first philosophy. And we're also doing this because Google very soon will be switching over to a mobile-first indexing model. Um, 
They did have a deadline for that, but they removed the deadline. But basically, they're going to be giving preference to sites that are mobile friendly in their search engine results. So another good reason to take care of that. So go ahead and plan your browser so that it's going to be um, showing the mobile version. Now here's my page over here. And before I start working on the page itself, I'm in VS Code. And I know this is kind of tiny. I'll zoom in in just a moment. But um, we need to have a place to work. So maybe even jump over and create yourself a working folder, a brand new folder that's going to contain your website for this term. I've already done that. And in VS Code, I've gone to File, Open Folder. And now my folder is inside my, I've got a separate folder, Class Demo Files. And I've got it right here. It's my RR Phillips um, Dev Winner 22. And that is basically going to be my folder. So I'm just clicking on Select Folder. Now within that folder, I do have an images subfolder and it looks like I got a few things in there, but don't worry about that. And I've also got a few web pages. Don't necessarily need to worry about those either. And the page I'm going to be making here is index. You'll notice mine is called index one. So I will be remedying that very, very soon. So this is kind of what I want to do. And I want to use the open folder in VS code. So then I can easily launch this page in, um, in my browser using the live server. Don't forget on those extensions, there's a number of great servers to have, but the one I really recommend that we get is this live server, Ritwick Day. It's a good one. Look for that. It's going to allow us to kind of look at our pages as we create them, <clears throat> just kind of like we would be publishing them. So that's a pretty good extension there. There's a number of other good ones as well. Okay, so let's see, let me go back to my file here. There's my index one. Let's see, I can close this. Now this is the, the start of my page. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm just gonna go ahead and close that. I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna create a new file, file, save as, and this is literally gonna be called index.html. This is gonna be my home page. This is gonna be your home page too. So you're gonna have one page in your folder that is going to be index.html. If anybody goes to your website, your domain, this is the page it's going to load up automatically. Now, this is the page that I want to be working with. So let's see, I'm going to click down here in the lower right. I'm sure if you can see that, but I'm going to basically dispose or break my live server connection. And then I'm going to click it again. And that's going to open up this page, which of course is blank. All right, which means I don't need this anymore. I do want to make sure I'm still using a mobile emulator. So on this tab here, I'm going to go ahead and do Control Shift I. Brings that up. It looks like my mobile emulator is on, and I'm already set to an iPhone 6, 7, 8. Perfect. So there's the page that I'm going to be working with, and I'm going to be recreating the page that, uh, that you just saw a moment ago in stages. So. I don't want you to follow along exactly with what I'm doing. I remember the goal for this is basically to remind you of some techniques, but you're going to do some slightly different things. I will be calling out a few rules that I'm going to be putting on to my page, though, um, that are going to apply to our home page. But we'll get to those as we get to them. So let's start working here. Let's see. I'm going to uh, close that folder. I'm going to zoom in. I'm using a new keyboard, one of those ergonomic keyboards. Uh, this term. I just got it two nights ago, so I'm still kind of getting a feel for it. So let's go ahead and blame. Any typos you see me make, we'll blame it on the keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with a doc type definition. I'm going to try not to use a lot of the Emmet shortcuts or VS Code shortcuts. just want to type some of these things out. And I'm going to have the uh, head section in there. Meta car set equals UTF-8 and like I said, for the most part, I'm only going to be doing things that you've seen me do in prior terms. There might be a couple new things I throw at you, but I'll make sure I call those out. So we got our character encoding meta. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and put in a title. And my title is going to be, let's say I'm just looking at my notes off to the side here. So alt source web development pipe symbol and then my name. Now, one of the rules for this first assignment is that you're not to make any reference to you being a student. This is not a class portfolio. This is going to be your professional web development portfolio. So um, I'm giving my web development portfolio a name, alt source. 
uh, web development uh, and my name. So I want your name to be on there. If you've got a name for your for your website business, your web development business, your web design business, then put that name on there. You can just make up a name. I just made mine up. Just thought of it this morning actually. So. Put that name on there, but what you're not going to have, you're not going to have any reference to CIS 295. You're not going to have any reference to Web Development 2, the name of the class. You're not going to have any reference to the word assignment or quiz or participation activity. So somebody going to your portfolio is not going to know that you're a student. They're going to, based on the content, understand that you are a web development professional and um, you've got some samples of your work and things like that. So no references to assignments or that you are a student. Okay, so I've got that in there. Now, we definitely want to get into some official meta tags and I'm going to go ahead and put in meta name equals viewport content equals width equals device width and then um, initial scale equals 1.0. There we go. We want to have that all the time. Meta name equals description. And let's see, content equals, and I'll just, I can expand on this later, but for now, every page we create should have a meta description, and the meta description should you know, uniquely describe that ind individual page. You should never have two web pages within your site that have the exact same title or the exact same description. Remember, the description is often seen on the search engine result pages, and we want it to, to inform a visitor. Okay, so for now, though, just to kind of keep it brief, I'll go ahead and put in... Um, Ralph Phillips's... I guess it's still apostrophe yes. Um, portfolio home. Good enough for now. We can expand on that later on. One of our topics is going to be SEO or search engine optimization, where I'm definitely going to want you to demonstrate understanding of various SEO concepts and best practices and things like that. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I need my angle bracket over there. I still haven't done anything that's showing up on the web page, so we'll be getting to that soon enough. Okay, so next on my agenda is I wanna go ahead and build an external link to a, a CSS file. In fact, I'm gonna grab this on another page. Um, I am gonna be using some Google fonts, which I've already found. So I'm just going to go ahead and reference those right on there. Okay, so I've got the link tags for my Google fonts. That's fine. And then I'll do another link tag for myself. Relation equals style sheet. And then href equals my styles folder slash, I guess I'll just call this a portfolio home.css. Haven't created that file, so let me go ahead and do that. I'll just create a new file here, file save as, and let's see, I don't even have a folder yet, so I need to create a new folder. I'm gonna call that folder styles. I'm gonna go into that folder and I'm gonna call this portfolio home.css. Perfect. Before I do too much work, I do like to do something really quick and obvious. Body, background color, red. I just want to make sure that things are linking up. So if I have this portfolio dash home CSS, let me jump over here, styles portfolio home dot CSS. I want to make sure that everything is matched up and copacetic. Now I don't see my web page going to red. Of course, I don't even have the body of a page yet. So that's a, probably a big factor, huh? So let me go ahead and take care of that. After this closing head tag, I'm going to have an opening body tag. After the closing body tag, I'm going to do a closing HTML tag. Cool. Now it shouldn't matter what is on there. I'm just looking over my spelling. Everything looks pretty good there. I think I've got my autosave turned on or checked, so that's pretty nice. Now I still don't see my web page going to red, so let me see if I've got a syntax mistake. First, I'll double check over here. Relation style sheet looks good. And then hyper reference to my styles folder slash portfolio dash home dot CSS portfolio-home.css is my file, body, 
background color red. All that looks pretty good there. Let's make sure I saved it in the right location. Let me click Save As. Looks pretty good. It's in my Styles folder. Uh, but look at this. Oh, no, no, that's right. I'm in the right folder there too. So let me hit Cancel on that. I'm going to do a Control S to save just in case. Let me refresh this page. Ah, so I wasn't getting my auto uh, refresh, but um, not sure what was causing that, but it looks like things are working so I can see my red background. Therefore, if I were to change this out to green, there we go, it goes to green. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but it looks like everything is fine. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that for now. So I'm pretty happy that my external CSS file is linked up. And refresh that and it goes away. So now I'm gonna focus on the HTML structure of my page, and it's gonna be relatively simple. So let me just go to my notes here. And let's see, I'm gonna break the body of my page into multiple sections. I'm gonna have a header area, which is gonna be the section at the top for my logo, branding, things like that. I'll get to that in just a moment. And then I'm gonna have a main section, obviously for the main part of the page. Now for my portfolio home, the main part of my page is probably just gonna start off being a navigation menu. That's fine. And then I'm also going to have a footer section, which is also going to have some navigation on there. Now, there's not going to be much content on this page. Now, part of the reason it doesn't have much content is because I don't have much space to work with. Remember, I'm working on a small phone platform. So I'm going to keep it very, very limited. The other thing, this is going to be a rule for you, I don't want you to add any images to this page yet. So for this first assignment where you're developing your portfolio homepage, I don't want you to use any images. The other rule, and these rules by the way are in the uh, assignment directions, I want you to just use grayscale and only one accent color. So you're going to be using all blacks, whites, and grays for your colors with just one accent color, if you so desire, but only one color that's not gray or gray related. So I'm limiting your color usage. I'm limiting your use of images. I'm limiting your screen real estate to only the size of a mobile device, a small mobile device at that, not even a tablet. So you've got all of these limitations on you starting off. Hopefully that's gonna focus your energy on that basic HTML and CSS that you've used before, but now you're applying it in a new environment, a new situation. Okay, now within the header section of my page here, I'm gonna have an H1 with alt source. Remember, alt source is the cool name for my web development portfolio. It's not the name of your portfolio. Your portfolio is called something different, and we wanna use structured, nice structured data. So all of our web pages we create, including this home page, are gonna have one headline one or heading one. I often say headline, even though I think technically they're called headings. So you're gonna have one heading one. So that's the main name for my portfolio homepage. Now after that, I'm gonna do a paragraph and my paragraph is gonna have, let's see, it's gonna have my name in there. And then after that, I'm gonna do a span and then I'm gonna do web development. Now how you structure yours doesn't have to look the same as mine. In fact, I'd prefer if it didn't, but I do want you to have a name for your business, the name for your portfolio, for your web design shop. And I do want you to have your name prominently located. I'm throwing the word web development on there just as another clarification that this is a web development portfolio as opposed to a photography portfolio or a uh, app development portfolio or something like that. And I also like the idea of having some keywords on there too, um, just kind of help emphasize that particular topic on this page for a search engine. So yeah, so the name of the business and then the name of the proprietor and what it's all about. Now I'm just using a couple words, but you could also put a tagline in there as well. So that's gonna be in the header section of my page. I'm pretty happy with that. Now the main section is gonna contain a nav. Now within this nav, it's not gonna be much. I'm gonna just put in a dummy hyperlink And I'm gonna copy that and just paste, 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 paste. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess one more, we'll do eight. 
okay? So I'm just gonna have some dummy hyperlinks in there yet. Remember, this is our first assignment page and we're only making one web page. We're not making all these other pages necessarily yet, but we will soon. And these hyperlinks will become certainly more descriptive as we go into weeks two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, and these will lead the visitor to some key samples of your work. Maybe not all the samples of your work. Our portfolio is not gonna show everything you create. It's gonna show a few key examples that really demonstrate your ability. So don't feel like every page you create has to be linked from the home page. I might need to see those pages as the teacher, but we'll have another mechanism in place so that you can let me know exactly what web page I need to be looking at. Okay, so we're gonna have this nav section in the main. That's gonna be pretty important. And you see my page getting developed over here to the right? I don't care that it's not styled yet. Structure first, style second. Okay, so let's see. I've got that, I'm pretty happy with that. Now the footer, oddly enough, is gonna be kinda similar. So I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna copy that nav menu. I'm gonna paste it down there in the footer, but I might have a few, let's see, what have I got, eight there? I don't know, what am I gonna do, four, six? I'll do six. Now these are gonna start off being dummy hyperlinks as well. I'm not too worried about that. We might do one where we have an official hyperlink in there or something like that to, uh, to an email. So for instance, I could write something like, <clears throat> email me, and then I would change this out to mail to colon, and then I'll put in something like uh, Ralph at that's true. You won't be able to. Yeah, you, you might just use your your student address, your school email address, or something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and put in 95.dev, which is since I have the main domain that we're gonna be using, I've already got this set up email to work for me. Um, actually, 95. Maybe I should be using that as the name for my website instead of alt source. It sounds kind of cool, um, since you know since I can, so let me try that. So I do a hyphen there, how's that look, 95, and then we can change this out, 95. I'll tinker with that in just a moment once I feel like I've got some styling on there to look at. However, I think that HTML for our page is looking pretty good. So we'll have an email link as one of the links. Now, what are these other links gonna be? We're gonna work on these as we go. For instance, I think one of these links in the footer should be a privacy policy. One of them should go to a contact form, which is a little bit more in depth than just doing a, an email hyperlink. Um, uh, could be some social media hyperlinks in there, for instance. Maybe we're gonna have a link to a uh, uh, to a code pen portfolio or something like that. So we will definitely be utilizing more links in there, but I'm starting off just putting in dummy hyperlinks. So the hyperlinks in the main nav, those are gonna go to key samples of our work in different areas and stuff like that. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Oh, you know what, something else I'll put in the footer. I'll put a little copyright notice in here. So after the nav, let's see, I'm gonna do a paragraph, class equals copy, and let's see, amp uh, where's my ampersand? There it is, split keyboard. Remember, I got confused by these split keyboards. Ampersand, copy, semicolon. That'll give me a copyright symbol. And let's see, I'll put in 2022. It's still 2021 when I'm doing this, but we'll think ahead. 2022, I'll just put in my name there. There we go. All right. So there's the HTML for our web page, and I'm pretty sure I haven't done anything new, right? You've seen all of these elements before. We've got some hyperlinks, got an old mail to hyperlink in there, copyright symbol. I did a class attribute, kind of nice. Um, heading one, paragraphs. Even in here, nothing too scary or new, correct? No, this is all familiar stuff to you. So this is all old school HTML. And uh, excellent. So now let's jump over to the CSS and let's start to make this page look good. We're gonna start kind of like from the top to the bottom or sometimes we can think of it as from the outside in. 
And when I style stuff, I typically like to style it in the order it occurs. So one of the first things that I might style is the body. The next thing I might style would be the header. And then the next thing I might style would be the headline one. And then the paragraph after the headline one, and then so forth. No rule that it has to be that way. It's just a habit I kind of like. All right, feeling pretty good about that. You know what? Uh, I forgot comments were going to be a big part of this, and I didn't really do, seem to do that. So let me go ahead and make sure that we all remember how to do comments here. So in HTML, here's a comment. And this is going to be uh, navigation leading visitors to a sampling of key work. All right, that's good. That's an HTML comment. And then we'll have another comment down here for this nav. And let's see, navigation leading visitors to um, extra info, like privacy policies and um, social media, stuff like that. And I've got my ending tag there, so that's pretty good. We'll make sure we do some more comments with our CSS so that we're really clear on that kind of stuff. Otherwise, I think we're in pretty good shape. Obviously, you can add more comments. And I do want to see you commenting more. So you might see in some assignments coming up that I, that I uh, require that you put in comments in various parts to not just explain to yourself what's going on, but if you were to explain it to a visitor, somebody who's actually looking at your source code like to me, do I know why you're doing that kind of thing? But because our web page is so simply structured, I think we don't really need too much explanation here. So let's go ahead and jump over to the CSS and uh, take a little, uh, take a little beverage break. Okay, so now I'm going to focus my attention on the CSS and let's give this page a bit of style so it looks a little bit more polished. All right, I'm going to start off with a comment. Now I'm still going to be using the same simple reset rule that I used in the entry in the intro level class. Although it might be nice uh, in the next week or two if we develop our own external reset CSS file and then we just reuse that for each of our projects. So, but I think I'll still go pretty simple here. And let's see that we're going to do the old classics um, margin zero, padding zero, border zero, and box sizing border box. Those are the, the good favorites there. And you can see just by putting in that margin and padding zero, we've even already started to change how this page is going to look. All right, so that's my reset rule. like to have that first. Now, if I did have a separate uh, CSS file reset rule, then I would simply have another link tag before this link tag that went to my CSS reset rule, uh, where I established some of those standards that I often go with. But I think for now, that's pretty darn good. Now, this time I am going to throw some new stuff with you. I'm going to create an HTML rule set, and I'm literally going to be using the HTML as my selector. Now, you have an option. You can use the HTML as your selector, or you can use colon root as your selector. So root and HTML kind of mean the same thing. And even though you wouldn't do this in real life, I'll go ahead and write it this way. So that way it's clear that I'm referencing two different things. Now there's a few things that I'm going to put in here. And one of them is going to be font size 62.5%, which seems like a pretty weird number, right? Well, that 62.5% is actually coming from something. I'm going to turn on my calculator, a little calculator button here. And I'm going to take... 10 divided by 16. Basically, 16 pixels is pretty much the default font size on your browser. And if I do 10 divided by 16, I get 0.625, which is 62.5%. So, all right, well, what does that do for me? Well, it makes everything look friggin' tiny, that's for sure. Well, what this is going to allow us to do, it's going to allow us to use the root m unit of measurement. And this is a great place for a comment.
we can rely on the rem, the root m unit of measurement a lot more often. And because we pick this number, if we use one rem, then it's gonna be equivalent to 10 pixels. If we use 1.5 rems, it's gonna be equivalent to 15 pixels. Two rems would be 20, three rems would be 30. 3.6 rems would be 36. It gives us a lot better control, and root m's are kind of nice to use as a sizing unit better than just regular m's, because root m's are gonna be based off of this root size. If you were to put m's within m's, like an m for a paragraph that's within a, a div that also has its own m, they can compound on each other, and Sometimes you might want that, but usually it kind of takes away a level of control that you might have. So root M's are going to be good. We're going to be using a lot more root M's uh, this winter. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Now the other thing I'm going to do on my HTML is I'm going to set a min height of 100 VHs or viewport heights. Basically, I want to ensure fills up the height of my device. Now, I'm also gonna be creating a variable, dash dash, and let's see, what I'm gonna call this color, I'm just gonna call this color dash accent one. So, I mentioned earlier that our page is gonna be completely grayscale, completely black and white, but what I'm gonna do is create a CSS variable with an accent color. This will allow me to easily change the accent color so it'll repopulate it over the page. We want to get into using CSS variables a bit more because it's going to allow us to more efficiently make and change um, colors on our page. Not just colors, by the way. We could do this with styles. I'm sorry, uh, things like uh, widths and heights and stuff like that, other characteristics. But I think using colors is a great first example of a CSS variable. So I'm gonna put in RGB, and let's see, what's my first color gonna be? One, or accent, 150, comma, 200, comma, 200. There we go. Now, I've declared this, this uh, variable. It's gonna be this uh, pretty shade of light blue teal. I kinda like that one. That's gonna be my accent color. And I'm gonna use this several times on my web page. And what's nice about this variable is that if I change my mind and I want to change my accent color to something else, I can just change this one value here and it will change at all the other places on my page. Really good way of managing multiple colors. All right, so, and I'll show you in a minute how we can reference this particular um, color variable. All right, I feel pretty good about that. That's my HTML rule set. Now we're gonna get into some things that seem a little bit more familiar to you. And I'm starting with the, the body of my page. <clears throat> now, I'm kind of referencing my notes off to the side here from what I had typed before. Remember I had made this page uh, in advance and I'm just kind of remaking it here with you. And I'm just kind of looking over my notes and there's nothing too exciting. But let me go ahead and start to plug in a few things. Now, a lot of these are aesthetics. So you're gonna be deviating from what I'm doing. You're not, your goal for this assignment is not to copy the page that I'm making. It's basically to make your own home page using HTML and CSS techniques that you've learned in prior terms and creating this new portfolio home page. Um, so I will remind you also in the assignment directions, you are not to copy my page. Now it doesn't mean we're not gonna have some similarities. We're all gonna have a headline one. We're all gonna have uh, some dummy hyperlinks as part of a navigation menu and stuff like that. But how these things look are gonna be different from each other. Um, and it could just be with our colors. Now remember, we don't have a lot of color variants because we're using lots of grays. So with the body of my page, let's see. I'm gonna do a uh, border top on here. Eight pixels, solid. And then I'm gonna, ooh no, I'll write it this way. Var for my variable. And then I just write in dash dash color dash accent one. Dash dash, there it is right there. VS Code's helping me out. I can just click on that. And so that's gonna give me my accent bar right up there at the top using that border top. Cool, I like that a lot. Okay, and let's see, I'm gonna do the same thing, border bottom, eight pixels solid, far dash dash color accent one, happy with that. Okay, you know what? I think I also wanna do a min height on here. Min height, 100 VHs because I want those to stretch. Yeah, I want that bottom border to be all the way down there at the bottom, so I like that. Don't forget, VH is viewport 
height. I know we started using that uh, last term, but you may have forgotten it. There's also VW viewport width. Our viewport is basically what we can see here. Um, the number represents kind of like a percentage. So that's 100% of the viewport height. If we were using VWs, we could do 80 VW to be 80% of the viewport width. Now, 80% of the viewport width is similar to just 80%, but not exactly the same. So what um, the viewport considers is the visible space. If we were just using a percentage, it would also include the width or, or height of a uh, scroll bar that we might have. So we can get some slight differences by using 100% versus 100 VWs or viewport widths. Just keep that in mind. You might jump back and forth from time to time to see which version gives you the better look that you're going for. All right, feeling pretty good about that. And let's see, I'm also going to put in my font family, and I'm just going to do generic Verdun. I'll just do just do that set there. Now remember, I am using a, a Google font, but I'm going to use that with my headline one. And let's see, I'm also going to set a font size of 1.4 rems. So good quiz question, 1.4 rems based on what I have here. How big is my font size? 14 pixels. 1.4 rems, root m's, corresponds to about 14 pixels because my root font size is 62.5%, which we get from 10 divided by 16. And give me just a moment. I got to go put some eye drops in. Bear back. Okay. So I feel pretty good about that for now. We may come back and add some more things, or maybe you're still working on this. Remember, you're not you're not copying everything I'm doing. If you're doing an accent color one, your accent color is different than my accent color. Remember, there's like over 16 million different colors you can choose, and the odds of you picking the same background color as me are pretty darn slim. Okay, now after the body of my page, what comes next? Well, then I have the header. Now, I'm not gonna do too much in the header. I'm gonna put in a padding of eight pixels. You've seen that before. Now, I'm also gonna write this overflow hidden. Now, it's a little bit disingenuous of me to write that now because you don't know why I'm putting in that overflow hidden. And I should probably take it out, but basically, um, I did this page before and I, you know, I style things as I create them and fix things as I need to fix stuff and things like that. I'm going to do something in my, for my headline one, which necessitated me throwing in this overflow hidden. So you can see how that works. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and take it out now. You'll see what happens. And then we'll see how that helps me by putting it in there. Of course, padding of eight pixels makes pretty good sense. You can see I've got a little bit of cushion of space now around that heading, that headline one. Now within my header, I've got my H1. Now this is where we're going to do some trickier stuff here. Let's see. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put in my font family, and I have to put in yellow tail cursive. Okay, there we go. So that's the font that I wanted to use. That's the Google font, which I downloaded, or not, didn't really download it, but I looked up before, before I turned on the recorder, before class, and I found a font. I wanted something that was kind of scripty looking, but also relatively legible. You know, I don't want it to be so tricky that people couldn't read it. And I'm gonna make that bigger and stuff like that too. So, of course, it's a two, two-part process. You know, I'm using a link tag to basically get the font that I want, and then I'm referencing it, of course, with the normal font family property or the font property if you're using the shorthand, that's fine. Okay, what else have I got going on here? Ah, the first example of some gray. Color, RGB, is gonna be 10, comma 10, comma 10. That's gonna be a very dark gray. Remember, with the RGB, it's three values, uh, red, green, and black. And the numbers range from 0 to 255. So 0, 0, 0 would be black. 255, 255, 255 would be white. Anything in between, if they are all equal, would be some shade of gray. So 10, 10, 10 is equal. So it is a shade of gray, but it's very close to 0, 0, 0, which means this gray is so dark, it is almost black. I hardly ever use pure black or pure white on a web page. If I want to use something that's as close to black, I go with something really super dark gray. And if I want something to be close to white, I'll use something like a really light gray. For instance, the body of my page, I think is still white. So let's go to the body of my page here. 
and I could do a background color RGB and I'll do something like um, 240 comma 240 come on okay. there we go so it's a really light gray and of course nothing wrong I could say you know what? I'll do 250 250 250 which is almost white but not exactly quite there um, or something in between, you know, 245, 245, 245. But this is what I mean by only having one accent color, everything else is going to be some shade of gray or some variation of black or white. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, let's get my semicolon on there. And what else have I got going on here? Yes, I do have some other things to do font size and this is where I've tried out some numbers before 5.6 rems root m's that is and I'm gonna do text align center that looks pretty good and I'm also gonna throw in some letter spacing on here and letter spacing I tried 8 pixels I think that could look pretty good yeah I could dial it back a little bit I think yeah I can handle that I don't know if I want the hyphen or not, since I don't have a hyphen in my actual domain name, but I think that's good for now. And let's see, I'm also going to throw in a text shadow. We did text shadows in the 195 class. Two pixels to the X, that's the horizontal offset. Two pixels Y, that's the down or the vertical offset. So it's going to, my shadow is going to be right and down. You can already see it starting to blur. It looks like the, looks smudged there very little blur on there and then for my color good old uh, color accent one yeah so I've got a little bit of my accent color as my text shadow yeah I like that a lot you know I'm gonna go a little step further here I'm gonna put a comma and do another text shadow and I'm gonna do negative two pixels that would be uh, to the left and I'll do zero pixels which is, oops, I want a comma though, zero pixels, and then I'm gonna do a lot of blur on this one, and then I'll do RGB 20, 20, 20, which is a really dark gray. Just to kind of add a little bit of haze on there, and kind of what I think kind of makes that text pop a little bit more on that light whitish background. So uh, yeah, just really kind of stands out a little bit. I played around with these shadows a bit before and I kind of landed on that. I thought oh, it looks pretty good. So remember, what you see me typing here, I'm not just typing it for the first time and, well, I'm good with it. I typed this already and I tried different variations. I tried probably 10 different uh, accent colors and I landed on this one. Um, I looked at different fonts and I tried different text shadows and I tried different letter spacing and different, you know, centering and stuff like that. So I've gone through lots of iterations of this but it would have been boring watching me do that. But it is a habit that I want you to do. I want you to take time and kind of try something out, look at it and see, hmm, does that look okay? Does it, you know, when you look at the web page quickly, does that name kind of pop? Does it stand? Is it easy for you to read? Don't use a font that's so tricky that people don't understand what the letters are. So I do feel okay with this so far. Um, yeah, so this is all part of that page here got my text shadow on there and then I've also got a place let's see I tried this too margin top and I did a point two M's just to create a little bit more space now you notice I'm just using M there not a root M just because you're using root M's doesn't mean you can't use other units of measurement like 2M so yeah I did point two M's if I did point two rems that would work remember one rem would be uh, 10 pixels so point two rems would be two pixels or could have just typed in two pixels so just different ways to go about it nothing necessarily right or wrong but so far I think I'm happy with that headline one now let's move on to the paragraph that's adjacent to my headline one and I wanted to write it this way just as a reminder h1 plus p this is the paragraph that is adjacent to our headline one so this is an adjacent selector the paragraph that is adjacent or a sibling to the H1. And really, 
sibling is actually not accurate. So I'm going to actually take that word away. Because you can have a sibling element that is not an adjacent element. So I shouldn't say the word sibling there. So my paragraph is adjacent to my headline one. I'm going to show you something real quick here. Let's see. Let me go style this paragraph up a bit. What am I doing here? Uh, font size, two rims, 20 pixels, text align center, letter spacing, four pixels. That's what I did. This one I thought was pretty neat. Transform perspective. I played around with this one quite a bit. I did a perspective of 200 pixels, but I tried different numbers and you know, we don't see it yet because I misspelled transform. There we go. So I want to do transform perspective of 200 pixels and rotate 30 degrees. Okay, now that is not coming out right. So let's see, what have I got here? Transform perspective of 200 pixels. I'm going to rotate. Oh, I only want to rotate X. That's right. I'm going to rotate horizontally. There we go. I thought that looked kind of neat. Kind of makes the text come kind of like it's fading backward and stuff. And, and when I did that, you can see, I'm just using my, my pointer here. You can see I've got a little bit of wiggle, which means there would be a a small amount of horizontal scroll. So by putting that perspective on there, it really did kind of impact some space. And that extra space is creating this scroll business, which I don't want. So once I saw that happening, this is where I would go back to like my header, which, and I could put in something like overflow hidden, which means anything that's going outside the boundaries of my header element, which is constrained by the viewport, it's going to be hidden. It's gone. And now I don't have that little horizontal scroll action. We don't want any horizontal scrolling ever. So let's make that our rule for the entire term. All of our page designs will never have horizontal scrolls. Okay, kiss of death, horizontal scrolls. Perfect. All right, pretty happy with that. Let's go back to this real quick. And let's see, what else have I got going on in here? Um, text transform. Uh, what do I do? Capitalize. Just capitalize the first word. I'm good with that. And let's see. Border bottom. I did one pixel solid variable. Get my color accent one in there. That's good. Padding bottom. What did I do for that one? Four pixels. And I did a margin top of 2.4 rems this time. Okay, pretty, all right, pretty happy with that. Just getting the spacing around and stuff. Now, before I move on here, let's do this. H1, the paragraph adjacent to that with a span inside of it. If you recall, I actually have some span tags surrounding the words web development here. So, I want to make sure that I account for that. Let me just check something real quick. Yeah. So something I didn't put in the HTML that I did before that I think is going to just make things a little bit easier, but don't forget our break tag. So while I'm here, I could just go ahead and put a break tag and that forces a line break right there. So my name and the word web development, words web development are in a separate line. Cool. I'm happy with that. Now, in addition, so what I'm doing with this span here, check this out. Uh, color RGB, what did I pick, 180, 180, 180, always with these shades of gray here. Um, text transform, and I get uppercase, letter spacing 10 pixels, thought that looked pretty cool. And then I did a filter, blur of just one pixel. It doesn't take much, when you use the blur filter, you can try it here. In fact, I can try it with you. That's just one pixel, and it's noticeably blur, blurrier, the word web development. If I made that blur like eight pixels, which doesn't sound like much, look, it's so blurry you can't even see the letters anymore. So it does not take much to blur. If I went to four pixels, it's um, still so blurry you can't even read it. What does two pixels look like? Uh, you can make out the words, but it is pretty blurry. So doesn't take much there. 
But I thought that looked kind of neat. Now, here's something I did that was a little bit different. Do I have it on here? I do. Um, okay, so check this out. I put a position relative. Now, position relative is going on the span tag, the span element within that paragraph. Now, when you're using position relative, it's usually because you just want to either maybe position something inside of it, a, a child or a descendant, um, or you want to just nudge this element. So what I'm doing, I wanted to take the words web development and put them above my name. So it'll be web development first and then my name. Now, of course, it would have been probably a little bit smarter for me just to switch it here. I could do web development first and then my name in the HTML. But still, I wanted my name to be first in the HTML, but I wanted it to look different on the styles. Plus, it gives us an opportunity to try this out. So I do position relative, and then I adjust the top. Uh, I did negative 5.5 rems, which is about 55 pixels. And that puts that word web development right up there. And of course, once I started playing with that, that's why I started putting this bigger margin top on the paragraph to kind of nudge it down and give me more room. So if this was like 2.9 rems, it pushes it down a little bit further. Um, actually, it doesn't look so bad. Let me do something really dramatic so it can really stand out to us. I'll do five rems. There we go. So that's actually getting, creating a little bit more space in there. I don't know if I quite needed that much, but um, let me look at three. Yeah, maybe I want more than that. I should go for what's right in the middle, four. Cool. I'm happy with that. So basically just playing around with that. Now remember, this is all the paragraph that's adjacent to my headline one. If I went over here and I did something really simple, <clears throat> in fact, I think I could break it this way. If I had a break tag, in between my headline one and my paragraph, the paragraph is no longer adjacent to the heading one. And look at that, all that styling is broken just because there is something impeding that CSS rule from being true. Let me get rid of that break tag. My paragraph is now adjacent to the heading one. Those styles are back in business. Excellent. I know this video is a bit long, but keep keep with me here. I know you're gonna have to pause and stop and, and come back to it. Just make a note of where you are. And yeah, we're getting, yeah, that was probably the trickiest stuff there. I've already demonstrated a couple of new things, but um, yeah, I think for the most part, that's about it. So let's head back over to the CSS. Now, what do I have next on here? Okay, I got the main section. So let's fly through this part. I've got my main, that's after my, my header section. And I'm just putting in some padding on there. What have I got? I've got zero pixels on the top, eight pixels on the right, 12 pixels on the bottom, eight pixels on the left. Top, right, bottom, left, clockwise, starting with the top. Four units of measurement, same thing with margin. Nothing exciting there. Let's see, then I've got main uh, child nav. So this is a child selector. Child selector. Nav is a direct child of main, similar to a descendant selector, but not exactly the same. For instance, my anchor tag is a descendant of main but my anchor is not a direct child of main. My anchor is a child of nav. My nav is a child of main. So, but both nav and anchor are descendants. So yeah, that's, it's a little bit tricky sometimes, but remember descendants can be children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, and so forth. Whereas if I'm saying a child selector, the nav is a direct child of main. Now, in this example, I didn't really need that. I could have done a regular descendant selector because for this to not work, I would have to have a, a nav within a nav within the main. So mostly this is just an example of, yes, this is something I want you to remember from your previous work in web dev. Um, okay, so the nav in here. Now, this part, I think I am doing a little something different. We're gonna mess around with this a little bit more. But I'm going to do a display grid, I'm doing that. And then I've got my grid template columns. Come on, there they are. And I'm just going to do one fraction, one fraction. This is going to create a side by side column look that I wanted to go for. And we'll do grid template rows. Come on, there it is. And we'll just do one fraction there. So everything's pretty much equal. 
a lot of similarities between Grid and Flexbox, and we're, we'll, ex we'll explore this definitely in more detail in, within a couple of weeks because this is going to be a really useful tool for making responsive web pages, but it's also going to be a great tool just for making neat, organized web pages with with clean structure and clean lines, even if there are no visible lines. So my nav is now a grid container, a grid parent. All right, what have we got going on next? Main child nav anchors, the anchors within that. And I think all of these are gonna be somewhat familiar. So let me kind of go a little bit quickly here. And what have I got? Display block. Turn those inline elements into block elements. I like doing that a lot. Text align center. Padding, 12 pixels top and bottom, eight pixels left and right. Margin, 12 pixels all around. Text decoration, none. I don't like the underlines when I'm working with um, clear navigation menus. By the way, converting those into block and stuff like that, now they're just kind of filling up that space. What else have I got going on here? Um, color, ah, there we go. Let's do my accent color, there it is. And a background color, RGB, and what did I pick? 50, 50, 50, comma, 50. There we go, always shades of gray. Still a little box shadow on this one. I did text shadow before, so a little box shadow here. Two pixels to the X, two pixels to the Y, two pixels of blur, RGB. This is what I did. Um, no, I did 90-90. Okay. And then a font size of 1.6. Rems. Transform. A little rotate. Oh, I must have been playing with this. I've got zero degrees in here. Yeah, I must have taken it away. And let me go and do a border, bottom, four pixels, solid, variable, accent one. Yeah, so I kind of like that look. And I was playing around with this. You know, sometimes I like to rotate some of this stuff. But it just felt like as I was getting more, I don't know if I was digging that. So I kind of just changed it to zero. And I figured, oh, well, when I'm showing you guys, I'll see what you think. So I kind of like a little bit of rotation. It's not too bad but I didn't really think it was adding anything. So I went to zero degree rotation instead of just deleting that or commenting it out. And I thought, eh, actually, I kind of like the, I like the clean parallel lines. Since I've got these visible border lines in there, that looked pretty good. Okay, so that takes care of those anchor tags. And let's see, main, let's see. Yeah, I'm not gonna even do a hover on there. I'm gonna take that out. You can experiment with it yourself. Let's see, footer. Now my footer is gonna have a border top that is one pixel solid and good old variable. Color accent one, I like that. Padding of eight pixels and a font size of 1.2 rems. Love it. Almost done. Let's go ahead and take care of last couple things on here. Now my footer, nav. I just did a descendant selector on that one. Display flex. We played around with display flex a number of times. And in fact, if you used it on your 195 final, probably made your life a lot easier. So display flex, and I'll do a flex flow of row wrap like that. That's all I need there. And then we've got footer, nav, anchor, the anchor's in there. Flex of a flex grow of one, a flex shrink of zero, and then I did 100 pixels, which is the basis, kind of like a minimum, and I did a display block. All right, I like that. I'm just kind of looking down here. There's my, my footer nav, kind of getting structured as I go. Uh, I gave a min height on there of 40 pixels and a border of two pixels solid in RGB. What did I do? 40, 40, 40. Text align center. Text decoration none. Margin four pixels and padding four pixels. 
no, padding of eight pixels. And a background color using var accent one. And a text color, yeah, I'll put this on a separate line. Text color of RGB, 40, 40, 40. Okay, and the very last one is my copy, my copyright line, my dot copy, class equals copy. Text align to the right, font size smaller. Yeah, you can do that. And margin top of 40 pixels, because I haven't done much pixel usage today. And that is my web page. So yeah, I'm going to be tinkering a little bit more with this, but I think what I've got on here is going to satisfy the, the main part of the assignment. We're making a web page for my future portfolio home that um, obviously fits well. Now, that's okay if I had to scroll up or down a little bit. Scrolling up and down is, is perfectly reasonable. It's the scrolling left or right, which we don't want to be able to do. Um, but it looks good on a, a small phone device, 375 pixels. It's all in grays, except for my one accent color. Don't forget, with that accent color, we can go here. If I wasn't using this as my accent color, I could do something like a orange red. And look at that, my accent color changes every time I use that particular reference. I could do yellow green, and that could be my accent color. That looks pretty, I actually kind of dig that. Hmm, do I want to leave it that way? Maybe I will. It's okay, you can do that pretty easily uh, when you're using those CSS variables. I dig that, so I think I'm going to keep that yellow green in there for now. So that's the page. However, we're not 100% done because I also want to make sure I get this page published. So stick with me for a little bit longer. And I'm going to go ahead and load up. I'm using WinSCP. And let's see, what do I want you to see? I want, let me bring this over here real quick. Come on, let's drag this over here. Okay, so basically, these are my server settings for my space here. Yours are gonna be similar but different. Uh, we're using SFTP protocol. You got your host name in there. My host name is rrphillips.95.dev. And I believe most of you already have these accounts. If you don't, you're gonna get with me individually so we can make sure you've got web space to work with. Port number 22, your username. Your username is probably a little different than my username and their password. Everyone's got a password that's uh, kind of tricky. so make sure you get your password um, as well. Otherwise, I think it's pretty good shape. So let me go ahead and log in. Okay, now I need to get to a place. So I'm logged into my site. I can see I'm in my domain folder. Now remember, you don't want to publish in here. You need to go into your domain folder. You're not gonna mess with anything. You're not gonna delete anything that you didn't create and you're not gonna edit anything that you didn't create. Just leave it alone. But I'm gonna go into my domain folder and I can see I got a bunch of crap in here from prior terms, you know? Well, I don't wanna get rid of it completely, but it's not gonna be part of my new website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over here and I'm gonna go to my winter 20, oh, I gotta change that to 22, right? Oh, there it is up there, dev winter 22. There it is. So this is the page I was just working on. There it is right there, index.html, December 8th, 1129 AM, which is the date I'm doing all of this stuff. So that's the page that I'm working on. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder, a new directory, and I'm just gonna write it old stuff. There we go. There's my old stuff folder. I'm gonna take my old stuff, and I'm gonna, if I just drag everything, well, almost everything, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put all of that in there. I'm gonna wait a little bit. So my work's not going away. I'm just moving it to local storage. I'm not gonna be publishing it. It's not gonna be online. If I wanna republish something because I think it's good work, then I will edit it, update it, publish it, and possibly link to it from my portfolio homepage. So taking a little bit longer than I thought. There we go. So everything's copied over. I got a whole bunch of font awesome stuff on there. 
Um, that might make sense to you students very, very soon. I think I have a little assignment. Maybe it's an extra credit skill, actually, where I have you explore what Font Awesome is and put it into use. Okay, but I've got all that copied over into my old stuff folder. So I now have an old stuff folder, which is on my local drive, well, technically my Google Drive. And so now I can select all of this stuff. Remember, all this stuff is what I things I created or added and put on there and delete. Are you sure you want to delete all of that stuff? Well, actually, what did I not do? Now I've got some favicon stuff on there that I didn't create, but What's that well-known folder? Oh, that's for something else, I guess. All right. Since it's in my domain folder, I will delete all of that. I know it's scary to hit that delete button, but don't forget, before I hit the delete button, I copied everything. I've got everything loaded in that old stuff stuff, old stuff folder. And this is also going a little bit slow, so. There we go, that part is taken care of. Now, I'm ready to publish. So what am I gonna publish? I'm not gonna publish my old stuff. I just got rid of it for a reason. But what I am gonna publish is all of this other stuff. So I'm gonna be publishing my web pages and I'm gonna be publishing my images folder and the styles folder, just drug those over. So really the only page you're gonna be seeing is index. I've got this index one, which is my old version. I guess I don't really need that anymore. So I can delete that off the server and I can delete that off of my local storage, that's fine. I've got these other pages, SVG on page and text shadows. I was playing around with a couple things, um, but uh, that's okay, they're, they're published, but I'm not necessarily gonna link to them. So I'm pretty sure everything is published. So, which means if I go to my website, this stuff should come up. Let's find out. I'm gonna go to my browser over here, RR Phillips, looking pretty good. So now I'm not in mobile emulator mode, I'm just on a narrow browser. If my browser was wider, there's how my page would look. So there's my website, it's public. Um, I got my cool yellow green accent color, but otherwise everything's looking pretty snazzy, I think. And of course, if I look at my emulator, there it's just like it looked before. My CSS is loading up, my page is loading up. If I click my email link, it goes to my email application, that's fine. And it looks like it's gonna create an email to me. Um, cool, close that, nothing wrong with that. So there we go, so that is, a lot of HTML, CSS review. Also cleaning up our web space to make sure we're ready for new stuff. Remember, get rid of all your old things, put them into storage um, locally. They don't need to be online. Publish the things that you need for this new assignment. All right, so thanks for hanging out with me. I know it's kind of a long video, but we would have done this in class if we were all uh, together and we would probably would have little, done a little bit more experimentation, but all that exp experimentation is important. So while you're working on your portfolio homepage, try different colors, try different looks, try different arrangements of these key pieces of information on there. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Take care.